I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Brian Ensminger. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm excellent. Hey, thanks for asking that. I'm pretty good. Um, You're my final conversation for tonight. Um, So it's a pleasure, my friend. Me too. Well, please do tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting? I would think it's probably a combination of the fact that I have a podcast. And so I I tend to spend a little bit of time on Facebook, maybe a little bit too much time on Facebook in those (laughs) groups. And I think that's where we connected. Yeah, most definitely. So tell us, uh, before, what part of the world are you in right now, Brian? I'm in the United States, uh, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, I love Tennessee. It would have hurt if I didn't ask that. I love Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, I love Tennessee. Um, Franklin. Franklin is where yeah, okay. I usually spend my time. Okay, uh, yeah. That- yeah. Franklin is beautiful, isn't it? It is. That's actually where I my day job is. Oh, really? Yeah, Yeah. I was in in Franklin. Downtown Franklin is amazing. It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah, Brian, before we do a whole podcast on on Tennessee, um, (laughs) tell me about the podcast, please. Yeah, so I have a a weekly podcast called The Engaging Missions Show, where I interview missionaries and church planters about their stories and what they've seen. Yeah, it's a few podcasts you have, don't you? Uh, well, I, I have one podcast myself, and then I edit for three other shows. Oh, yeah, because I, when I popped up with your name, it's like, wow, all of these things came up, right? Um, <laughs> but I did listen to that one where you were list, where you were speaking with a church planter. Yeah. Um, pretty intriguing conversation. Um, so who did you learn that skill from? That skill of not... Um, oh, bringing the, that religious side, if you would, to Christianity? First off, I grew up in church in a Christian home, so I have a, a pretty strong background in that. But I also recognize that the way I read the Bible, it's not so much about a religion or about a following a set of rules or anything like that. It's actually about a relationship with God and then how that works itself through our through our lives and in particular in how we interact with other people and how we approach that. So I, I do my best to try and bring that to the forefront through the show. Yeah, well, it definitely worked, right? Because it's the one thing I came with first, right? So you're doing a great job. Well, thank you. If it, Yeah, if it was based on me only, well, definitely, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, amazing stuff. I, I actually really enjoy that conversation. So you've been doing this for quite a bit, even the editing side of podcasts as well. Where do you get the time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess kind of the dirty little secret, I, I edit for three other shows, but then I have an editor who does most of the editing for my show. So I'm able to send him (laughs) cleaned up segments that he goes through. And one of the things I assume that you do you edit for your own show? No, I'm not able. to. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I've discovered is that if I edit for my own show, it takes me a whole lot longer because I get in there and I start tweaking the EQs and I try and make myself sound like I should be on the radio or something like that. So I like to pass that off to somebody else who can be a little bit more um, detached from that and let yeah. him do that. I, I do occasionally edit my own show, but I try to pass that on to somebody else to keep myself a little bit more distant from it. Yeah, the first podcast I did edit, and this is the producer okay. there, and I'm there with my wife, right? And we're editing this uh, these first episodes, and it came out sounding like, um, and then, and then. So it's like you're cutting, right? You're cutting yeah. yourself and pe- uh, putting it back together so the conversation isn't flowing. And, yeah. Uh, and then the ums and the and you try to correct that, yeah. So it's really yes. a good idea to detach from it um, and get better. Um, one one of the things the producer said that really stuck with me is, um, it's better to edit while you're speaking. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that definitely stuck with me. So you've been doing this for a while. Why will you continue to repeat the skill of bringing the value? of um, what Christianity represents um, via your podcast. So I, I think there's probably a couple of things. One is bringing this to the forefront. My, my audience is primarily people who are already uh, involved in the Christian faith. So I'm, I'm not trying necessarily to go out and trying to find new people, but one of the things that I find is that we can be become very disconnected from each other, in particular, people who are in cross-cultural places where they're 
expats, so to speak, it can be uh, there can be a big distance b- between us, not only in terms of the miles, but emotionally. And so I, I like to try and bring that together and to bring that encouragement that, hey, we're all in this together. We're all part of this. And we need to reach out and to continue building those relationships. And, and for me, with my show, one of the the greatest advantages I have, or one of the greatest things I'm able to do is connect with these people that I've never really known. And very often I find that we feel like we connect at a real heart level, if you will. So there's a deep connection there fairly quickly because of the common cause and the common framework that we're coming together. And my heart really is then to encourage them to give give them somebody who's listening to their story and then also to take that then, and that person is me, and then take that and deliver it to other people as well. So I that that's what I like to to continue doing. All right, wonderful. So you've you've you definitely stated exactly what I think represent was represented on the podcast where I think the conversation I listened to is a pastor just expressing um his downfalls, if you would, right? Mm-hmm. That do occur and you expressing how detached we are and even the functionality of uh, that individual in the church and how that could be so um, uh, uh, to the disadvantage, right? Um, because there's a space, right? Yeah. A cultural space that has occurred where the pastor is the pastor and the congregation is the congregation, right? Or the whoever is the head of the church, mm-hmm. um, the, the organization. So you've definitely captured that. Um, Tell me one other thing, Brian, that you've done consistently over the last three years. So one other thing, I I guess I was thinking probably the podcast is the thing that I've done the most consistently (laughs) over the last three years. I guess beyond that, um, trying to be really intentional about spending time with my family, because as you would know, having a podcast, and then I also work full time and I have other volunteer commitments that I've made, making sure that I take some time and set that aside to spend specifically with my family uh, a little bit a day, a day. And then I try and take some extra special time on the weekends to make sure that I'm investing in my kids and in my wife to continue building those relationships. How does that make you feel? Oh, man, I, I love it. Well, I should say most of the time I love it. Sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming. Uh, you know, when, when things seem to pile up and there are what can begin to feel like a lot of people wanting my attention or a lot of uh, different priorities. But in the middle of all that, just the, the the fact that I have the opportunity to do this and that I have the privilege of having these decisions to make is an incredible blessing. Yeah. Why would you suggest to someone listening out there who may be in a leadership position, right? Uh, why, why, why should they do what you've done by ensuring that you maintain that balance? I would say that it's probably the single most important thing you can do is to make sure that you're honoring the commitments that you've made and honoring the people in your lives. And sometimes that does mean making trade-offs and and making those decisions. Uh, but the the payoff, you know, a lot, right now my kids are young, so I'm probably not seeing a lot of that payoff. But my hope and my prayer is that as my kids age and they grow into being teenagers and then adults, that the time that I've taken now to invest in them and to continue building my relationship with my wife will bear fruit in their lives as they walk their lives with integrity as well love it well amazing audience we are live with the guy brian etzminger right he has one of the (laughs) most challenging last name to pronounce but hey (laughs) you know i'm doing it say it say it and you say it please let's see here it would sound in in the way you would say it your last name yeah i would say entzminger oh you see and he made it sound so easy (laughs) oh i've been practicing for over 40 years now (laughs) <laughs> well Brian let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful warm blue Caribbean water mm. Brian what is your earliest childhood memory the the earliest thing I could think of that I know for sure is a memory is when I was probably three or four years old and my family was moving we lived in a, a small town and we were moving to another town and I remember sitting in the moving truck I believe with my uncle but some of the details are a little bit fuzzy and I remember Remember that he was eating um, like licorice, but they were called shoestrings. And I, I would ask him what he was eating, and he would say, "I'm eating shoestrings." And I would say, "You can't eat shoestrings." And he would say, "No, it's right here." And he would show me candy, and. It, to this day, I can still remember the absolute confusion of going, that's not a shoestring. But then he would say, this is a shoestring. You know, try one. Wow. wow. So how old were you? I, I was somewhere around three or four. I don't remember exactly wow. when my family moved. Wow. So why do you think this memory is so clear? 
I, I probably because of the level of confusion, be, because not so much being in the truck or anything like that, but just the the fact that he said that he was eating shoestrings, and the only shoestrings I knew were the ones made out of fabric that went on shoes. Wow, at that age, wow. So so can I offer an interpretation to the thought sure. picture you created in, uh, right in my mind? Yeah, I love the idea of what is occurring with the way you um uh, the way you assess truth. Hmm. And uh, to see that in your life, even with the podcast, like you, it seems as though you're just pointing out the way we assess truth and <laughs> analyzing that. And that is absolutely fascinating to me. Wow. 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 At three, like, I mean, yeah, you know, you have shoelaces, but <laughs> to be able to, to be confused by an adult um, presenting something to you that. That is fascinating to me. Well, I, I'm glad because I spent a lot of my life confused. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian, if we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? I, I think it was probably a Christmas song, Silent Night. Yeah, wonderful. All right, Brian. Well, hey, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're about to move pretty quickly here. Are sure. you ready, Brian? Absolutely. Brian, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Not yet. Are you married? Yes, I am. Do you have children? Yes, I have two. Do you believe in God? I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Nope. How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time, the phone under the computer? More than eight or less than eight hours a day? More than eight hours a day. After a thousand and one conversations in three months in 2016, Brian, I had to get butt surgery because I sat down so much. I'm <laughs> joking, Brian. <laughs> no, I came up with this workbook and uh, the idea is, so the name of the workbook is yours. It stands for your own unique real self. The idea is after mm. self-discovery and reflection that you're able to connect a bit deeper with your own unique real statement, which is your mission. If you had to share with us, Brian, your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say that is? Do whatever you can find to do. Hmm. Love it. Brian Ensminger. Hey, this was <laughs> a great pleasure. Uh, before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Sure. Yeah, I guess first off, if, if anybody would like to connect with me or check out the show, you can find that at engagingmissions.com. And then just, you know, Having put out a couple hundred episodes now, I, if anybody has any questions about processes or systems uh, and about consistency on that and getting back some of that time, just hit me up by email. You can contact me through the website. I'd be glad to do anything I can to help keep people podcasting. Love it. I love that. So full support to that. Brian and Sminga, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com. <laughs>